time. God bless you both. All right, here we go, folks. Joe Tessitore ringside with Tim Bradley and Andre Ward. Edgar Berlanga has not had a fight that has lasted more than two minutes and 45 seconds. Tim Bradley, does Sierra get him into the second round? I don't see it. You know, Sierra said he's not going to come out. He's going to be aggressive. And he's going to keep Berlanga out at bay. Oh, there's a thud. Yeah, and did you see the response from Sierra? He is so heavy-handed. You hear that thud when Berlanga punches. Not back here. Not now. The power is real. He did it. How Ed Edgar Berlanga came in knowing all the pressure to deliver was on him and over-delivered. You know what I like about what Berlanga's doing here? He's coming around the guard. He got a guy that has the earmuffs on. Coming around the guard, hit him high on the head, right around on the ear that caused his first knockdown. But then he just, he comes behind the jab and now he's throwing a little hard because he knows he has Ulysses hurt. But the placement of the shots, he's landing the shots in the right place. This is a veteran guy been in a lot of lot of training camp, my camp for one, and he's able to get this kind of reaction from this guy. You see him trying to knock the left hand of Ulysses down, and it doesn't seem like much, but that speaks to the power of Berlanga because if he grazes you, just like that on top of the head, guys don't want any more. They think they do until they get hit. We have talked about this with Berlanga before how it doesn't look like much sometimes, how even just the glancing blow can cause a cut or do damage. When we say the phrase heavy hands, exhibit A, yeah. exhibit fourth round to deal with it. Verdejo brings that left hook behind that right hand. It's really gonna be trouble. Two knockdown score now for Felix Verdejo. That pool counter, he can do it all night long. You know, Nakatani, you see where his hands are placed? He shoots his jab from that position. He doesn't bring the jab back to his to his face to block the right hand of Verdejo. But to my earlier point, Joe, talking about sacrifice, he left his comfort zone on the island of Puerto Rico and he came out here, made himself uncomfortable because he's trying to rebuild his career, get to a championship and he wants to be one of the greatest Puerto Rican fighters that have ever lived. And he's got a long way to go, but he's headed in the right direction. Much respect to him for rebuilding himself to this point. Nakatani, once again after a knockdown, settles in behind the jab. And then you see Nakatani just following up. He knew he had his man hurt. Landing a, a glancing shot right on top of the head, but, but was, right on the arm. It was really the jab that did it again. It was the jab, but he was already initially hurt from the jab before the hand. And Verdejo's fatigue, throwing wild, wild looping shots. Eno Ruiz calls a halt to this bout at 1 minute 45 seconds of round number 9. Declaring your winner by technical knockout. And now... The WBO Intercontinental Lightweight Champion, Masayoshi Nakatani! Masayoshi Nakatani, who in the seventh round landed 16 power punches to turn things around. Great respect for those two to pose for the pictures. That was a great fight. I mean, a great fight to see the total punches there as Nakatani landed 81 of 412 thrown. 55 of those 81 were power punches. He was damaged, he got up twice, and then he over-delivered. Speaking of a guy who always over